Uh, I am Austin Reed. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on air. And let's let's kick things off. This is artists and authors, and our first guest today. Uh, give it up for Teresa. Welcome Thank to Central you. Valley Talk and, and artists and authors. Thanks for having me, Austin. Happy to be here. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a, a, an amazing read. Uh, your book came out December first. Did not even a, a month old. You got what uh, top rating? Got a bestseller in three categories on Amazon. That's yeah. amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. So um, the book. Tell everybody its name. It's called Life Reconstructed. And it's a widow's guide to coping with grief, finding happiness again, and rebuilding your life. I haven't read um, the, the you know the book yet, but I, I was able to read kind of the back and the foreword. Um, you wrote this. Uh, w- when did you start writing? I started the book the, just this year. Okay. Um, had been blogging quite a bit before that, so integrated some of that content, but just been this year. Um, so talk a little bit about your journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you lost your husband back in 2012? 2012. 2012. Okay. Yep. Yes. Very unexpectedly. We were um, out of town celebrating our anniversary and having lunch and his heart stopped beating. And so, you know, and despite Im- my immediate efforts and the um, immediate response of, of uh, the emergency response and great efforts at the hospital is just not meant to be so literally in a moment's notice you know life draws such a line in the sand and dividing everything from the before to the after so yeah very 10 shocking. 10 years later now uh, how are you how are you doing doing well i'm doing well um it grief never ends it changes it becomes more uh, tolerable so i make room for that and I also make room for new things and, and a happy life. It's differently happy, but I will say equally happy. Yeah. Did, um, as you were kind of starting this, this journey with the book, talk a little bit about how the, um, the emotions that were running through your mind and body. Yeah, you know, this book is quite a bit about the tools that helped me so much. So there's a little bit of my story in the in the very beginning. Um, and then m- the majority of the book are the tools and resources and concepts that helped me so much um, to, to take those steps forward and create a new life for myself. So it's so it does draw on my experiences. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, uh, you know, when I first was widowed, I needed this book, I needed a book. Um, that had words that were knowing, mm-hmm. written by someone who knew, really knew, um, not philosophically, um, but knew what it was like. And so, so it was important for me, for every word I wrote, to be knowing and deep. And also it was important for me to have short chapters because fog is a thing and yeah. it's really hard to retain information. So very short chapters mm-hmm. um, and some specific application tips to help people begin to apply it. It's an easy read. I would like to think that it would be an easy read. Now, granted, when I was first widowed, I couldn't read a paragraph and remember, yeah. you know, three sentences and remember what it said. So very intentionally, like about one page chapters. Okay. okay. So. Um, tell me, you know, one of the things I, I, I read was just the love and support that, that you had mm-hmm. from not just your family, not just your friends, but strangers. Yeah. Did that... I'm sure that has stayed with you. It was profound. I wasn't, you know, this was immediately after my husband's heart stopped beating and I couldn't understand plain English. Mm-hmm. And yet we were in a restaurant, the, the, the waitress just wrapped me up in her arms. That I could understand. And it continued in the hospital where, um, where people would just scoop me up. Perfect strangers would scoop me up. And I, so the only language I really could understand, I'll, it was love. I'll call it love. Yeah. It meant so much. And it and really inspired me to always look for those opportunities when I am a stranger mm-hmm. to do something meaningful for someone else. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, uh, again, I, you know, 10 years later, um, has 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 things changed from year to year for you? It's different every year. Mm. It's it's a little bit different every year, and that's okay, okay. right? Um, Christmas is my husband's birthday. Really, Christmas oh, wow. is like it's hard. I yeah. ache. So yeah. it's it's interesting the duality we we use that word often in in the in the widowed world duality, mm-hmm. right? So 
you can experience Christmas and, and enjoy it and love the people who are there and at the same time ache in a very deep way for the person who, who is not there physically. So it's a very interesting experience. And I always tell my clients, every year is different. You shouldn't be somewhere, you know, some made up better place. We, we should ourselves. Oh, I, at this year, I should be better. No, you should be exactly how you are. Um, I lost uh, a, a very, very good friend um, and colleague on December 1st of last year. Oh, gosh. And uh, I remember this time last year, I could care less about Christmas. Mm -hmm. I could care less. Uh, you know, my family celebrates Christmas and Hanukkah. I just, I was like, pff, you know, I, I was in a bad, bad state of mind. Mm -hmm. um, what would your advice be to uh, people... Uh, uh, like us that, that have lost somebody very profound in their life. Uh, I mean, he wasn't a spouse, obviously, but um, yeah. What do you, what do you say? Yeah. It's okay to not be okay. Hmm. Uh, we, we think we should be better. We put on our game face, try to show up as the best actor in a dramatic series. And it's like, Nope, you get to not be okay. You get to not be in the spirit that is okay. okay. Be authentically you. And I always recommend um, make time to feel the feelings that we can't outrun them. I tried for a number mm -hmm. of years. It's not possible. So make space and time and just feel all the, all the ache, all the hurt, um, all the grief. And the more proactively we can do that, mm -hmm. if you do have a, a, an event that, that you choose to go to, totally up to you, then you could be more present there. And I, you know, now... A year later for me, um, I feel like I've healed, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm this year I'm able to enjoy the holidays. You know, I know he's in a better place. Do, you know, you have a lot of experience as, as a coach. Um, tell us some, some stories, uh, with some of your, your clients and, and yeah. Yeah. People come to me for all different reasons. I just want to feel a little better. Mm -hmm. I just uh, trying to reconcile how I could possibly be happy when my spouse is not physically here. Things like that. Or I want to date, but I can't reconcile the fact that I want to date mm -hmm. when I when I said I do for life and I meant my life. Right. It's very it could be very disorienting. So those are some of the ways that that people come to me, some of their needs. And and so we you know, we work through it step by step. And it's always about uh, what thoughts are you thinking? What rules? So we make up rules in our head of how we should do this as if there was a rule book. There isn't. And there isn't. No. And there's no grief police to come right. arrest you. So, you know, what do you th how do you think you should be doing it versus how are you doing it? Mm -hmm. What thoughts are you thinking? We start there because our thoughts create how we feel and our feelings drive our actions and our actions aggregate to create results. So if we want to shape our results in the future. We go upstream and look at the thoughts. What would you say to somebody that has moved on and re maybe they're thinking about remarrying? What's that like? Yeah, so I want to I, I wanna offer that the notion of moving on is... Um, most of us don't use that term. Okay. Um, and, and it's fine, too. If it, if it serves you, use the term. But a lot of widowed people will choose to use the term moving forward. Now, that sounds just kind of nitpicky. Interesting. Um, no, it sounds better. <laughs> it sounds better. Yeah. Moving on means leaving, leaving them in the past, right? Yeah. Um, and moving forward, uh, this notion of integration, right? Bringing them forward right. um, is, is so critical. And we can do that this Christmas. We can do that. Um, even in a new relationship, we can bring our person. Many, many, many widowed people have new relationships, and their person is still present and still honored. Um, there are people out there who are savvy enough to do that for you. Um, for me, it was very confusing. I'm, I'm engaged. Very confusing oh, okay. to even be interested in someone. How does that work mm -hmm. when you signed up for life? So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say healing, um, the early stages of healing from your loss is one growth spurt. And then when your heart starts to have these new ideas and feelings, that's a second growth spurt. And there's a lot of rec like reconciling that has to happen in that phase. Yeah. Why? So like um, back to, to uh, around 2012, when you were kind of looking for advice and looking for an answer, um, why aren't there more books like this? 
You know, I there's a lot of books written by people who have decades of experience mm-hmm. in grief, and I and uh, I don't no disrespect at all to them, but you can read the first paragraph, and there's um there's an absence of of a knowing of a depth. So so that's what I personally ran into, and I also ran into. You know, very often in the first chapter, here are the stages of grief, which nothing could make me angrier than reading the stages of grief because the stages of grief were not written for us left behind. They were written for the dying. So it's inappropriate to have the stages of grief for someone who's grieving a loss, one. And two, there's nothing linear about grief. It's a hot mess. And so to suggest that there are neat, tiny, you know, linear stages is just incorrect. Do you suggest, um, I would imagine in this book, uh, it talks about reaching out if you need support. Is that critical? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, I did it alone, a lot of it. And Mm -hmm. I, why? I, that was, that was the same. (laughs) That was the same for me when, uh, when my friend passed. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, I don't want to talk to anybody. People would ask me, Hey, you know, do you need anything? No, no. And I just wanted to hide. And that was the worst thing I could have done. Yeah. It does feel like a private matter. It did to me. Um, but it, it certainly would have served me. There was no such thing then as a life coach or a life coach, certainly not a life coach for widowed people. Sure. And there were no books that applied the, the tools of life coaching to the widowed experience. So um, I would have seen a, a therapist if I could have found a widowed one because to me that I needed that relevance. Yeah, that connection. Yeah. yeah. And so it just was a private matter for me, really. I had, I had some people who who did know the journey and were really helpful to me. But for the most part, I did it solo. And I, and so that's why I want to help people not do it solo. Um, what was, uh, what, what is your uh, spouse's name? Ted. Ted, Ted. All right. Um, do you, today, do you, do you kind of, have you moved to the point of he's in a better place? I have always known that he was in a better place. Yes, absolutely. I know that he is. I believe firmly that he's with me. Yeah. And um, all the time, and that he is supportive of this life that I'm creating for myself. And I'm yeah. sure he is like freaking delighted about the book too. <laughs> I, you know, it's dedicated to him. Yep. He always said I would write a book, and I said, of all the books ever written, what on earth would I have to add that hasn't already been written? And he said, you will. Yeah. And he was right. I wish you were wrong, um, but he was right. How long were you guys married? We were celebrating our 12th uh, wedding anniversary when he passed. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. Um, you know, with a, with losing a spouse compared to losing a friend, it, it's different. I, and I, I guess everybody's um, situation sure. is different. Um, but would you say that this book could help people, like in my case, as, as well? Or yes. is it totally separate? You know, the examples are specific to loss of a spouse, but grief is grief. So there, there absolutely would be parallels. And I have friends reading the book that, that are saying, there's so much just life stuff in this book, like life skills. Yeah. The tools of life coaching are for everybody. I just so happen to provide them, you know, right. apply them, excuse me, to the widowed experience. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got about 30 seconds okay. left. Uh, tell everybody the best way to get the book. Best way to get the book is on Amazon, Life Reconstructed, Teresa Beshwaite. Um, Yeah, and you can go to my website, thesuddenwidowcoach.com, which points you back to that Amazon site. Right there. Anything in the future? Do you think uh, you're going to be writing more books? I'm going to write another book about about love. I love it. Yeah. All right. We'll come back then. So nice. Um, And then also, uh, I was going to ask you one more thing, and now it just went out of my head, but... um, Thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Um, I'll probably ask you the question when we say goodbye. It'll come back in my head. So uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for having me. Uh, Teresa, everybody. I'm Austin Reed. You're watching Central Valley Talk. We've got a live performance. Uh, That's coming up next. Stay tuned.